so I, I guess it's doing the affiliate anniversary thing early. <laughs> um, so it's tomorrow, the 12th. Um, and uh, uh, we're going to celebrate it uh, next weekend on Saturday, probably. <laughs> probably Saturday um, I put up a tw poll on Twitter um, asking if people would want to see me or want to watch me work on the puppet so um, six people have voted for yes <laughs> and nobody's voted for nope so excuse me or we will probably do it. <laughs> um, so I need to get my brother to clean up his board game so I can cut fabric on the table. <laughs> um, so we'll do that on sun Saturday. And I have one more MRE left. Because um, I bought three. One for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but I only ate two. Um, for the 400 celebration stream. Um, so I have one we can eat. I don't know, at the beginning of stream or later. We should probably eat it after we work on the puppet. <laughs> we'll probably do that. Um, we'll probably start at 11 a.m. again. But what I'm doing besides sewing and eating the MRE, I don't know. <laughs> um, if you guys have ideas, let me know. Um, not according to Twitch, it isn't. What do you mean? my Philly anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> um, so, we could marathon a game like last time. I did not plan on doing that last time. <laughs> I, did, I was not planning on doing that. Um, so, we'll probably do the do a Twitch poll, chat poll, see what game to play next, like we did with our anniversary stream. The date's the 12th. I don't know why it's doing it on the 11th, the day early. I don't know why it's doing that. says it's uh, affiliate anniversary setting so by your affiliate anniversary February 12th 2023 stream date February 12th 2024 so it's tomorrow yeah celebrations begin at 5 a.m. the day before and conclude at 5 a.m. the day after 48 hours total due to our systems using UTC GMT minus 7 time well, the celebration is active, it cannot be snoozed or ended. So, the date's tomorrow, but they start up the date before and after, just because of time zones. One more person. <laughs> Maybe. 
But how are you, Toto? How are you? I hope you guys are doing okay. Mm -hmm. Hope you guys ate something yummy. Toto, good to see you. It's been a few days, I think. Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Started school again. Okay, okay. I hope that it's not too rough on you. <laughs> I'm doing okay. I've had quite the week, but <laughs> it's over now. It's over now. I'm good. Uh, we ha had. Um, rice balls with, with sausage, red pepper, stuff. It's a whole fresh meal. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> um, but it's really good. I ate that today, and. Uh, it's some of the breakfast sandwiches. I think there's one left now. <laughs> I, uh, watched, uh, Shangri-La with Evelyn. Uh, Shangri-La Frontier. Sorry. <laughs> the anime. Um, and, uh, the, the... Your stream streak went down. Oh no. <laughs> Probably play truck sim in the morning, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But you didn't miss any days? Hmm. I don't know. Are they still beta testing it? Last I heard of it, the, the day when they like started the stream streak thing, that you can like actually like see how many, how long your streak is. Um, they, said they were like, we're beta testing it. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Squats with me, Thorn. One, two, three, four, five. Tato, I got the 
breakfast pops, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, eight, fifteen. Sixteen. Maybe. <laughs> mm. I hope school's not too rough on you, Tato. You got it. You can do it. Thank you, Chang. Thank you. It's technically tomorrow, but Twitch starts the thing the day before and the day it goes to the day after because uh, they use UTC time or something. <laughs> what I did most of the day. <laughs> I I guess I woke up at an okay time. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Do the schedule real quick. Let's let's get uh, this week's schedule set up. Let's get this week's schedule set up. Hmm. Pop. Okay. Up on Tuesday. Is there an IHOP anywhere near me? Oh, uh, it's not too far. Well, Too too far. Can hear you. I will in a second. Okay. Where is it? There it is. Pay no mind to master tool in the background. We're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Torrance just yelling at me. I have to do this. Okay. Sorry for a weird throat noise. Did you eat today, Tato? And got chips. Oh, it goes till April 10th? Oh, my goodness. You have had burger. Hobo is a good burger. Alright, there we go. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, 
Was it a fast food burger? Did you go out for the burger? Sorry about that. You went out for it? Was it a local joint or was it like uh a chain or whatever it's called? I am curious about the burger. Okay, so tomorrow. Oops, let's play Power World tomorrow. Let's play Power World tomorrow. Grab from in and out. Okay, okay. I don't know if there's an in and out near me. In and out. <laughs> in and out. Um, people around here tend to drop their ends. In the accent. This was mountain. So in and out is kind of hard. <laughs> Power World. Hunting. Not sure. Tuesday. We'll play more Temtem on Tuesday, I think. Try and get to the dojo. I think Tuesday Temtem <laughs> is the game we've been playing the longest. Can semi consistently. We went like six months without playing it. But <laughs> you know. It is what it is. Tim Tim. Tuesday. There's changes. Thursday we'll play Baldur's Gate. Because we didn't play it this week. Was it good, Teto? Did you, it was it just the burger? Did you get the fries? Or t Tater tots? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know much about In N Out Burger. Okay. Um, and Wednesday is Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, I'll probably be live that night. I don't know why I wouldn't be. <laughs> um, so if you don't, if you're not busy. You come hang out with me. We'll be it's an ASMR night, so uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, Friday, we'll play more Korra on Friday. Hi, Brad. Hi, dear. 
Good to see you. Hope you're well. Mm -hmm. Get your, your other smooches here in a second. Starting my celebration stream at 11. We're gonna try. I'm gonna try. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. There we go. <laughs> there we go. How are you, Brad? How are you, dear? My little baguette. <laughs> how are you, dear? Oh yeah, <laughs> I uh, I put some of those cat paw pad mitten things on my throne. The uh, arm warmers with the the cat toe beans on the palm. They're cute. <laughs> those are on the throne. And if you have any suggestions for the throne, um, it, literally anything. Please do not hesitate to suggest something for the wish list. That Tato has suggested like 30 things by himself. <laughs> Hi, Star Girl. You want your smooches? Okay. How are you, dear? How are you? Good to see you. Hope you're all healed up now. Hi, Barry. Thank, thank you. Um, the date is actually tomorrow, but Twitch does does the affiliate anniversary thing the day before and after, just because they're in a different time zone. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Thank you for the spot your name, Starcraft. Thank you, Star Girl. Um, we're gonna celebrate it. Thank you for being here, Barry. Um, we're going to celebrate it on Saturday. 
all I know for sure that's going to happen <laughs> is um, we're going to work on a puppet. I need to get my brother to clean up his board game so I can cut some fabric. <laughs> and uh, I have one last MRE we can eat. So we're uh, going to do that. <laughs> I'm good, Star Girl. I'm good. I've had quite the week, but uh, it's over now. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, Barry was first. <laughs> Barry. Sorry for our throat noise. Barry. Barry, you're a very good girl. Very, very good girl. the redeem berry berry I don't have like a script in front of me <laughs> and uh, the affiliate anniversary stream ce celebration stream excuse me <laughs> we're gonna start at uh, 11 a.m. MST so that's noon for some people and Ten for some other people, or something. <laughs> mm. Same. You're the best, Barry. You're the best. Can we, can we get a shout out for Barry, please? If you're still here, uh, one second. Sniffers, bread wants sniffers and smooches. I apologize in advance. <laughs> I'm gonna have a smooches first because I can only do sniffers for like 20 seconds. Thank, thank you. <laughs> so 
So, uh, we're for sure going to be doing some hand cam stuff. Um, going to the affiliate celebration stream. I don't know what time we'll be doing that at. <laughs> um, probably after noon at least. We won't be starting with that, though. We'll be too tight. Um, so I need to cut some fabric and um, make sure that's ready for a stream because we'll probably just be doing sewing. I set up the sewing machine, but I don't have enough room on my desk. So we're just doing it by hand. But did you eat today, Star Girl? Did you eat today, Brett uh, Berry? <laughs> what do you guys eat today? Is yummy. Um, well, no. uh, Barry, if the rest of you are down to play Deep Rock on Friday or Saturday, I'm down. Oh, you're a clown? Okay, that's right. <laughs> that's fair. Sitting and relaxed? Okay, okay. I don't... I didn't even know like the Super Bowl was happening. I know nothing about sports. Nothing. I don't, the name sounds familiar, but I don't know who that is. the good boys if they're attempting to play GTFO that night. Maybe Lethal Company, I don't know. Head pants? <laughs> um Hi British Bestie, thank you for the the water, thank you, thank you. Uh, no, you're not losing your marbles. At least I hope not. Marbles are pretty cool. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm wearing a a choker. Toto uh, gifted it to me after throwing it for Christmas. I believe it was Christmas. It also has a... Um, a chain. <laughs> I'm not wearing that right now. It's kind of heavy. Amazing. I don't know. Is it amazing? Be comfy. Yeah. It also makes noise. So. Yeah. 
I like the, the bell sounds. if I'm burpy yeah it's it's red with a red bow and this uh, this bell um, it's from I don't know how you pronounce that <laughs> I go my God, my night's going all right mm-hmm how are you, Kong? Good to see you, dear. Was the, was the halftime show good, Stargirl? Sorry. <laughs> if you're still here, I hope it was good. I don't, I don't, I don't, like, I forget that the Super Bowl even happened. Mm, I'm glad you're doing better, Kong. Mm. I guess, I, I, I didn't know either. <laughs> Uh, Star Girl said, said uh, she watched the halftime show. Yeah, I did it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. oh, okay. The last thing I remember about the Super Bowl was the discourse around the them doing the the SpongeBob song, uh, the song from the movie "Sweet Victory" or whatever it's called. And then it was like, it's going to happen, guys. They're going to do it. Look. And then it was just the video. And, like, they played, like, five seconds of the audio. <laughs> it was really weird. performance mm -hmm. We're playing or anything. I remember the Super Bowl from that one would have been last year, two years ago, I guess. And I was working at Walmart because we, they were like, We got to prep for the Super Bowl as a big deal. Um, yeah, and uh. I remember because there was a balloon that got loose and was on the ceiling for a long time. <laughs> it was like, it wasn't football shaped as a football on the balloon or something like that. Mm-hmm. 
Did you eat today, Barry? Did, did you? I'm sorry if you answered. I'm sorry. Did you eat today, Kong? Good, good, good. I hope it was yummy, Barry. Not nothing yet, understandable. You had lunch? Good, good, good. Pretzels, apple slices, and chocolate. That sounds good. Besides the apples, that sounds like a A church snack because <laughs> uh, usually a family with uh, small children in sacrament meeting at church would have like a thing of like one of those cups no spill cups or whatever with goldfish in it or something Because when you're like f four and younger, you you have no idea what's going on. You're just bored <laughs> for an hour every every week on Sunday. And my when I was younger, I would always want to. It was always nice when you got to sit next to uh, Grandpa because he always had Tic Tacs. Yeah. Too lazy to cook or go out. Understandable. Cooking is. <laughs> cooking takes getting used to for sure. For sure. Also depends on what you're cooking. But my grandpa always had Tic Tacs, so if you sat next to grandpa, you got to eat Tic Tacs. <laughs> mm. 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 I was up to HelloFresh for a bit, like last year, I think it was last year. I think for like uh, three months because I got a discount code from uh, uh, cause uh, we two are Darling Strawberry or Darling Straw or Strawby, I don't know. <laughs> she got a uh, um, sponsorship with HelloFresh and it was a decent deal, and then I ran out. Of the discount and it was way too expensive <laughs> um, but none of the meals were too hard to cook the I got there's one risotto I got it's really good <laughs> it's so good um, but it took me like an hour to cook it because you're supposed to pour it in the water a little bit at a time and stir it so the rice or whatever soaks up the water or something and uh i probably couldn't could have done it i probably could have done it faster but i wanted to do it right so i, I had to pull it pull out a chair <laughs> okay come thank you for the work dear thank you thank you Mm. Mm. Good luck. <laughs> uh, I think I watched a few videos about OBS, but uh, now I, I just press the start stream button and hope nothing explodes.
I like that these things are on uh, plastic sticks, but at the same time, because they're, they're uh, like straws, they're not solid. And they like wrapped the candy around the stick, although it's still soft, I'm guessing. And uh, so like the, the stick isn't like actually like embedded in the candy, it's just kind of clinging to it. So you can't do like the slurpy sounds because for better or for worse <laughs> because of that. We'll probably play Wobble Dogs on Saturday too. I haven't played Wobble Dogs in a while. We still need to get wings. We haven't gotten a Wobble Dog with wings yet. Pretty cool. Sorry, Tato, it's crunching time for this sucker.
end part I can't crunch. That's too big still. <laughs> if I want to hit it with my molars, the stick is the back of my mouth and it's uncomfortable. <laughs> Not done yet, I guess. Hi, Rosie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are you, dear? Good to see you. Hope you're doing all right. Did you eat today? Disturb the peace and bit people. Oh my goodness, Rosie. Oh my goodness. Twisty Pop is gone.
Okay. <clears throat> I apologize in advance if I start going on a ramble. <laughs> um, specifically <laughs> about card games again, and specifically um, about MetaZoo. Now, if you don't know anything about MetaZoo, it was a it's a collectible card game. It's a CCG. Pretty sure. <laughs> that's I think that's what they call it. It's not a trading card game. It's a collectible card game. Um, I think it released in twenty twenty, like mid pandemic or something. The Kickstarter went through the roof. It was super super successful. Um, it's a card game, it's pretty much M Magic the Gathering, um, but the creatures have hit points instead of a, a toughness stat, um, and they have like attacks and abilities and stuff, so it's like Magic, Magic's resource system, but with Pokemon. <laughs> um... And you can have more than one beastie. The, 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 the monsters are called beasties, the creature cards. Um, and uh, I released the first set, released to the Kickstarters or whatever, it was the first edition. And then um, they printed second edition because, um, yeah, so, they, so the first edition stuff would keep, keep their value, I'm guessing. Um, and, uh, it's a game where, um, you play as casters, <laughs> and, uh, you co make contracts with the beasties to help you fight your, the opponent caster, and you can play spells and stuff, and flavor-wise, your deck is called your spell book, um, your hand is called your chapter, and uh, individual cards are called pages, and drawing a card is called bookmarking. You bookmark a card because you, you're like marking the page in your spell book or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> it's all kind of confusing because no other game uses language like that. They still call it like, like deck, hand, and card. So it, learning the game can be kind of difficult. <laughs> It is pretty difficult, and uh, it's called MetaZoo um, because um, uh, the the world around you affects the game. <laughs> kind of, it's it's very it's a novel concept. It's pretty neat. I think it's interesting, um, but a lot of it's kind of like, all right, that's never gonna come up, <laughs> like. Uh, the uh, jackalope, the jackalope card, can't declare an attack. You can't attack with the jackalope beastie card if there is a bottle of water or a drink within eyesight from where you're sitting. Um, there's Batman. It's not like DC Batman. Something fell off my desk. <laughs> um, the Houston Batman. And if there's a tree within... 30 feet of where you're playing he's invisible so he can't be attacked or blocked and it's, uh, it's really mean <laughs> stuff like that or um there's uh the metal man of alabama <laughs> and uh, if you put if you're able to put a piece of tin foil into the the arena or the your where your, your cards are from where you're sitting and you don't get up um, he can attack directly or something. I don't remember. <laughs> it's all like, most of it is simple stuff like that. Then there's ones that they printed for, um, Christmas. Where the, like, Santa and the Abominable Snowman, uh, uh, different snowmen. Like, there's the Friendly Snowman card, and then the Christmas set, there's a different snowman. <laughs> um... Yeah, and those cards can only be played on Christmas. 
and uh, there's uh, a set, the second set came out around Halloween time in October, so a lot of it's like spooky stuff can only happen on Halloween or in October. It's all novel. It, it's interesting, and it could be uh, a fun. It is a. It, it can be a fun little thing. Some of them are like, "Wow, this is never going to happen." <laughs> like there's a, a lava bear beastie, and uh, he has like 125 more damage on his attack if you're playing near an active volcano. Like that's never going to happen. <laughs> that kind of thing. Hi, Jaben. Hi, dear. Yeah, it's been a while. Hope you're doing all right. I'm doing okay. I've had quite the week, but uh, it's Sunday. Week's over. <laughs> uh, we're celebrating affiliate anniversary next weekend because it, the date for my affiliate anniversary is tomorrow. It's a Monday. I don't want to do a big long stream on Monday. I'd rather do that on the weekend when more people can stop by. Thanks, Jaben. I didn't think it would be this soon. <laughs> But thank you, thank you. Okay, bud. Sorry, sorry. Here's your close-up breathing. Fall down any new rabbit holes, J Bent? Or are you still stuck in one from earlier? Or something? I don't know. <laughs> yes, actually. Oh boy. Excuse me. Only talk about it if you want to. I but I am curious. I am curious. The Percy Jackson babies. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, when I was in sixth grade, my sixth grade teacher would read us the books. Was, I don't remember if she did it like every day. I think it was like if we had downtime or finished a lesson early, she would read us uh, the Percy Jackson books. Um, and then there was the movies that came out. A while ago that uh, weren't very good from what I remember <laughs> uh, the discourse around them I mean maybe the first one was okay I think but yeah now Netflix or Disney's doing it now and uh, I don't I don't know anything about it I, I think I heard something about it being good or bad I don't know <laughs> why bread be safe good luck only person Jackson memes, so you need to know what it was. Now you're six books in. Oh no. Like, Percy Jackson is uh, the, the Greek gods, right? I think. And then they, the, the author did like a spin off with. Um, a son of Zeus or something, you know, or it was like about the Roman gods. I don't remember. It's been a long time. <laughs> I think the guy was, maybe it was the son of Hades. I think it was the son of Zeus or the the guy the the Norse. Was it Norse? I don't remember. Maybe it was Norse. Maybe it was. And then it did. He was doing last. I think he started. Uh, 
I remember hearing he started one about Egypt, Egyptian, the Egyptian pantheon, I think. I don't know if he did. You only have to know he's on the memes. That's fair, that's fair. Um, Magnus Chase is in the Norse one. I don't know who that is. <laughs> like, the last I, I saw of it, I think the movie was on Netflix. One of the movies was on Netflix or something. I think. <laughs> it's in the series you're currently reading. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just remember we read through all the Percy books and then they started a spin off or something with a different lead. Um, uh, the, like, and I remember when I was in elementary, like, um, what's it called? Eleven Thumps was a big deal. Not go through with them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember. The movies are not very good. <laughs> as, at least as far as adaptations go. I think. They're probably just not good movies. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, But like... Uh, Love and Thumps was a pretty big deal when I was in elementary. Like, I remember we the author came to our elementary. Um, and there, there was, like, a assembly where he talked about the book. And he, he, like, signed copies afterwards for a few people. Because um, my, my dad liked Love and Thumps, or he read a few of them. Hi, Estrella. Hi, dear. It's been a while. You're not that late? Yeah. You're not. You're never late. <laughs> and Estrella arrives precisely when they need to. Right? <laughs> Hi, Estrella. Hope you're doing all right, dear. Hope your weekend treated you okay. <coughs> Michael Vey. Who's that? Like, the name sounds so familiar. Is that the, the pillage guy? Oh, no, it's, it's a book series. Okay, I think my dad read these two. The, one of the covers looks familiar. Yeah. Hi, Madi Desire. Hi, dear. How are you? Good to see you. Hope you're doing all right. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. I am not good with names. Michael Vey. Um, I think my dad has maybe has one of them. Um... Yeah, Eleven Thumps was a big deal <laughs> when I was in elementary, and uh, um, like there we had an assembly with the author came and talked to us about the book or something, and uh, if Michael to advance his story, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, Oh, yeah. Um, also, my dad really, or my dad has, or had most of the uh, pillage books. Um, this one, I really like those books. Uh, I read them all. I think. By the the pillage series by Obert Sky. My dad liked those uh, when I was. Uh, pillage by Obert Sky. Um, it's about dra it's got dragons in it. <laughs> uh, I can't remember how many books there are. At least three, maybe four. Maybe four. Are you delayed? Oh, am I dropping frames? No. Okay. Um, pillage. Let me type it in chat. How do you spell pillage? 
Okay. Pill age. There you go. Hi, you still up? Oh, last drink I had is a trigger word. Uh, it's just water. Are you okay with water? <laughs> you think you're fixed now? Okay. Yes, okay. I also have um, a plastic water bottle. Wah wah. Wah wah. <laughs> yeah, there's the Pillage series by Obert Sky. I like those. I read them in junior high, I think. Um, similar vibe, I think, too. Like, I feel like they're like Pillage, Levin Thumps, and like a Percy Jackson are all in like that same era. Um, it was published in 2008, so that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, but uh, it was like that era growing up. Levin. Or is it Lowen? I don't know. I, t I grew up with them being called Levin. Yeah, Levin Thumps. Yeah, it was a big deal. Levin Thumps was a big deal in my area. Levin Thumps. By... Oh, by Obert Sky. <laughs> That's why my dad liked Pillage. Because <laughs> it's by the same author as Pil the Pillage books. Yeah, Levin Thumps. It was a big deal when I was in elementary. The author came to the school, did the. I've said that many times, so I don't need to say it again. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Sorry, Estrella. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Water. 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 Wawa. 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 Water. 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 Yeah, I can see that. Uh, the only thing I remember about Love and Thumbs is that there's a really angry tree spirit or something. I think it's spoilers if I explain it like that. And I think they're good. My dad liked them. He hasn't talked about Love and Thumbs in a while, though. I don't know if he still has the books. Water, water, water. Water, water, water. I've never read the books, though, so I, I, I don't have personal experience with it. Water, water, water. Water, 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 water. Water, 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 water. Water, 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 water. Thank you for the redeem, Estrella. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, it's the same author that did um, Pillage. Uh, looks like Love and Thumps started before Pillage th in 2005. Let's see, should we read the synopsis here? Let's pull up the Wikipedia article. Plot overview. Yeah, read it? Okay. I'm just gonna read the... It's good day, smart. Okay. <laughs> I don't have the book, but I can read the Wikipedia article. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Looks like there's five books. We've got Levin Thumps and the Gateway of Foo, Levin Thumps and the Whispered Secret, Levin Thumps and the Eyes of the Want, Levin Thumps and the Wrath of Ezra, and Levin Thumps and the Ruins of Alder. Um, let's see. Levin Thumps. I can't read it. It's a 
it's just too tall. I gotta sneeze. Oh no. Uh, you can go and tell. We're just talking about books. Because uh, Jay Bent fell down the Percy Jackson rabbit hole. Uh, we're talking about Levin Thumps right now. I don't know if you know anything about Levin, Levin Thumps or uh, the Pillage books uh, by Obert Sky. But, uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> we're going to learn, yeah. All right, Love and Thumbs is a series of children's fantasy novels by Obert Sky. This series, which has five books, deals with an orphaned 14-year-old boy, Love and Thumbs, who becomes involved in a battle between good and evil. The five books in this series are titled Love and Thumbs in the Gateway to Foo, 2005, Love and Thumbs in the Whispered Secret, 2006, Love and Thumbs in the Eyes of the Want, 2007. Love and Thumps in the Wrath of Urza, or Ezra, excuse me, 2008. Until then, you want your smooches? Okay, okay. Thank you for your smooch redeem. books had you cringing mm -mm. I don't know it the last thing I remember hearing about Percy Jackson was that he might the author uh, might be doing a, a series about the Egypt Egyptian pantheon I don't know if that actually happened Percy excuse me sorry oh my goodness to go to college? Mm, I, I don't know. I wasn't a big Percy Jack. I mean, my, my sixth grade teacher would, my class, the books, if there was downtime or we were like on Fridays or something. Um, I'm not surprised with the, the show and stuff. There's lots of talk about it now. There's a nostalgia factor now. It's been long enough. <laughs> um, we're talking about 11 thumps right now. By Obert Sky. Is, who is Obert Sky? Uh, oh, his pen name is Obert Sky. Okay. Is he still writing? Oh, so there's four pillage books. Or pillagey. They are compiled into a trilogy. Okay. Greek Roman series. Okay. That's like the last thing I remember hearing about it. Right? And Michael Vay. Yeah. Uh, Jake mentioned Michael Vay. I don't. I think I've read. I've read at least one Maximum Ride book. Um, I've only read one. <laughs> Just skipping school. I think my dad. As some of the Michael Fay books, I think. Um, I've read one Mike, uh, Maximum Right book. Do I have it? Oh, I'd have to move the stuff to get to it. Um, I got it in elementary, because uh, elementary, they'd have like one, one day, like every term or whatever. Where you get to get uh, one free book in the school library, and the the librarian would stamp the the inside cover to say this is not a school book or whatever. And I think one of them was a Maxim Ride book. <coughs> I don't know when it happens in the series. It's the the one where they. Uh, the guy go Jeb goes missing or whatever his name is. I expelled from different schools. Oh, okay. Continue it. Mm. Um, but uh, the Maximum Ride book I read 
the guy goes missing and they're living alone in the house and then the house gets attacked and then they they run away and they go to like New York um, and they find like a lab and there's a cat that has human fingers instead of claws in its paws that it can retract and that's like the one thing I remember and then they get like a dog they bring one of the, the one of the animals from the lab with them it was a, like a little black dog I can't remember what the dog's name was <laughs> and then they go to like a big toy store or something that's all I know most of what happened yeah, I read it so many times. <laughs> it is the the book is very well loved. I've read it that book so many times. It is falling apart. <laughs> I think there's a, a section of pages in the book that are falling out. So, um, yeah, that book. I don't know what book it is in the series. If it's the first one, the second one the last one yeah get that storage mm -hmm. I, I go grab the book but I think I have to move stuff around I don't want to do that right now <laughs> okay Okay, so there's not... Oh, okay. So, I think part of the reason <laughs> Love and Thumbs is such a big deal here, because uh, looking at uh, this, uh, the talk about the author on Wikipedia, um, Latter-day Saint, Saints, the Latter-day Saint movement page is here. It's marked as low importance. So, um, I think that the author was or is Elias, which makes lots of sense. <laughs> which makes lots of sense as to why uh, we had a an assembly in elementary with and he was there. So that makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, in 2010, he went to over 300 schools in the United States as part of his Imagination Tour. That might be it, actually. That might be it, and he just happened to be LDS. That, that makes sense. Because 2010, I would have been in 6th grade. So, yeah, that, that timeline lines up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, primordial memories are coming back. Ministry train, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. A core memory, yep. <laughs> a core memory. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, literature, more right, more writers of literature. Oh, this and references in his 
the author's Wikipedia article. Like, all of his books uh, that were found in Salt Lake City. So, um, that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Deseret Book. He's... Okay. Yeah, that's like the church's uh, bookstore. So, yeah, that makes sense why he came to my elementary <laughs> in Utah and why he was such a big, he was such a big deal here that makes sense so don't feel bad about not knowing anything about love and stuff I thought it was this big deal right <laughs> but the author was at, was at the least I don't know if he still he's, he's still practicing but he was uh, LDS so that makes sense Okay, so back to the Levin Thumps article. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just going to start over. Levin Thumps is a series of children's fantasy novels by Obert Sky. A series which has five books deals with an orphaned 14 year old boy, Levin Thumps, who becomes involved in the battle between good and evil. The five books in the series are titled Levin Thumps and the Gateway to Foo. Uh, 2005, Love and Thumps and the Whispered Secret, 2006, uh, Love and Thumps and the Eyes of the Want, 2007, Love and Thumps and the Wrath of Ezra, 2008, and Love and Thumps and the Ruins of Alder, 2009. These books were originally published by Shadow Mountain Publishing, which I think is based in Salt Lake, so that makes sense. Excuse me. Uh, Levin Thumps in the Gateway to Foo won the Benjamin Franklin Award from the Independent Book Publishers Association 2006. The Levin Thumps series was followed by another series, a trilogy entitled Beyond Foo. The first book, Geth and the Return of the Lithans, was released on May 9, 2011. Um, okay. I'm going to read the first paragraph here in the plot overview because uh, people might want to actually read the books. Um, I might read them. I, I think my dad has them somewhere. Alright. So yeah, if you want to read some fantasy novels by a Mormon author, <laughs> uh, Love and Thumps and the Pillage Trilogy. I like the Pillage Trilogy. I liked the Pillage Trilogy a lot when I was reading them. I, th I think the, the third book was kind of stretching it. I don't I don't remember. I feel like the second one kind of closed it. Um, as Artemis Fowl, the ones with the last Guardians of Gahul. Last Guardians of Gahul. I, d I don't think I did. My brother might have. My brother might have. All right. Plot overview. Uh, this is from the Wikipedia article. <laughs> the little town of Burnt Culvert has a problem. Storms like never before are arising. This is the beginning of the end. Fu is falling. Evil is seeping into the world. Levin and, and Winter's romance is beginning to be obvious. And dreams are not as they should be. Twisted minds overpower Fu. Strange things are beginning to happen in the world. Clouds are territorial. Buildings walk on the opposite side of the street, and weird bugs are carrying people off. Everyone is jittery. Only Love and Thumps can save the day. A super genius, and also there are fairies. That sounds really familiar. It sounds familiar. Artemis Fowl. Oh, there was the book! Or the, the, they did a movie. Disney did a movie about it. I remember. That's why it's so familiar. <laughs> That's why it's so familiar. I might have read the book. Or... Like, that name That name sounds familiar because of the movie. So, I, I don't think I've read the book. I don't think I've read the book. Garbage film. <laughs> Ignore the newbie. 
would be Novi. But yeah, so I think the eleven thump books are the good. Um, I only have experience with um, the pillage books. Um, to a website. <laughs> There's another Wikipedia article for pillage. Oh, there might not be. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it. Um, but yeah. Give pillage a try. It's only three books. Um, I think it's from the... I've seen... I think they compiled all three into one book, or maybe a book collection. It's on. It's on Amazon. Let's see. Maybe we can find the synopsis on Amazon. The complete trilogy. Uh, it's it's on Kindle for eight forty nine. <laughs> uh, so pillage. Uh, there's three books. It's nine ninety nine for as uh, uh, in paperback on Amazon. If you want to give Pillage a try, I don't know why. It, hashtag not sponsored, <laughs> um, but I enjoyed the book. All right, when fifteen year old Beck Phillips travels by train to the scheduled secluded village of Kingsplot to live with his wealthy but estranged uncle. Beck discovers some dark family secrets, a buried basement, a forbidden wall, an old book of family history with odd references to dragons. Beck's life is about to be changed forever in this suspenseful tale about the destructive nature of greed and the courage to make things right. Pillage is filled with Mr. Sky's signature humor as well as some very intense moments, including a surprise ending that will keep readers young and old engrossed and entertained. So, uh, I don't think Pillage is too long, either. Um, so, yeah, it's, yeah, give them a try. <laughs> They're not too expensive on Kindle. It seems. Sorry. <laughs> we went down a rabbit hole there. <laughs> I don't think they were bad books. They were enjoyable. But like I thought Eleven Thumps was like this big deal. Um well I find out now that uh, it's because I was living in a bubble. <laughs> um and the author has a it's got his books published in a Deseret book. Which is owned by uh, the Elias Church, or it's a, the church-funded bookstore. So, um, yeah, <laughs> give them a try if you feel like it. I guess um, if I can find, maybe we can read a pillage or something on stream. I don't know, because I haven't read it in a long time. I think I read through them in junior high. 
self-published. That's cool. That's cool. My my brother um writes. So it's, it's okay, Jaben. It's okay. How is to the best of us? My brother um is working on books, novels, I don't know. He he's been writing for oh, since uh, he was since we were younger. I don't remember when he started writing or or what made him want to start writing, but um he uh, he's he's technically a published author because uh, our high school did a um, short story contest or something, and his got published in the little pamphlet booklet thing that the library printed. So he's technically a published author. I think <laughs> I can't remember what his short story was called. Like Sheriff of Clover Town or something like that. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I haven't read it actually. <laughs> I don't know if you'd want me to. Then I went and made a mon made a monster by getting him interested in uh, speculative evolution product pr projects. <sighs> so yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because there's a there's a uh, author on YouTube that uh, is doing. He, 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 uh, has, a he's published two books, uh, at, that take place in his setting called Chimere. It's a spec evil project where, uh, a planet in a distant solar system, um, was, uh, um, home to these microscopic purple single-celled organisms or something that uh, they make copies of other organisms to, as hosts and uh, uh, but they dominated the whole planet so like the whole planet for a long time was just covered in purple algae and then they left their planet and went into space and found earth at some point and uh, um, they took animals from Earth, so they, they I think that they got to Earth in the Devonian or something, um, and, uh, the, 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 the magic, the people on Chimere would call it magic, um, and things on Chimere live for hundreds of years for some reason, um, probably because of the, the magic, <laughs> anyway, the, the, the organisms take organisms from Earth, they copy them, um, and then send the, the information of the copy to uh, the colonies of magic on Chimere, and then they copy it onto Chimere. Um, but to make a copy, they have to absorb the organism. So basically, <laughs> the, and there's like, so if, let's say it's like a water buffalo. The water buffalo's experience is being uh, broken down into atoms. <laughs> pretty much instantaneously and then being uh, alive on another planet somewhere very far away <laughs> um, so that the, the, this colony of magic on earth has uh, transported many kinds of animals they, they only do it if there's like a mass extinction or something on Chimere so for a long time it was just um, arthropods and amphibians and stuff and then dinosaurs showed up for and then the chimera was stable <laughs> anyway i got my brother into it and he's obsessed <laughs> he's obsessed and created a monster Un two 
three, four, five. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's on YouTube, and he's published two books that are collections of uh, short stories he's ri written. Um, let me see. If I can find him. Excuse me. Who did Legos? Oh, that, that was my cousin. Me and my cousin did the Lego videos. My brother helped me with the, uh, we did the videos with our Pokemon plushies and Beanie Babies. Was it this morning or yesterday that he uploaded? Um, anyway, if you're curious, just uh, search Tales of Chimere uh, in YouTube. I'm trying to find this. <laughs> The video. I don't think it was. I think it was this morning. Oh, his name is Keenan Taylor, I believe. Yeah. K E E N A N Taylor. He's a pretty cool dude. He's pretty cool. <laughs> like, it's a pretty cool setting. Uh, yeah, me and my cousin did the Lego videos. And, uh, uh, one of our mutual friends was in, involved a few times with the video, the Lego videos stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have that VOD on YouTube, so it's not lost, it's just privated. I might unprivate it at some point for a little while. I just don't want to lose my reaction to those videos. Because <laughs> uh, I forgot about a lot of those. And I thought like that stream would be like an hour maybe. Because they're not very long, the videos. But no, it was like three and, ha three and a half hours. <laughs> It was like three and a half hours. Over an hour. Keenan Taylor. The Tales of Chimere. But that sounds about right. Thank you, thank you, JPEG, thank you. Was this just unlisted? I think the video is just unlisted. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, Keenan. What were the essays about? I don't think Keenan has done the... Keenan Taylor's done the video longer than an hour. Maybe he has, I don't know. But yeah, I sent my... I sent my brother down a rabbit hole. And I created a monster. <laughs> I just wanted to share something... 
that I thought was neat because I like speculative evolution projects. I think they're pretty cool. It's fun to think about that kind of thing, right? But um, yeah, because <laughs> um, I, I got I I sent him to uh, Keenan Taylor's YouTube channel because he was writing in his book that he's writing. He um, he wants people to, instead of like dogs and stuff, people, to, instead of people domesticating dogs and things, they domesticated um, uh, lizards. They have pet big lizards and he wanted, he was, he wanted me to help him figure out how that would work. <laughs> I was like, well, uh, okay, here you go. <laughs> Watch this guy, he knows a lot more about that kind of thing than I do. Because I found Keenan through, I think it was Budget Museum. Uh, the YouTube channel Budget Museum. Which is also a really good channel. If you like uh, paleo, pa paleobiology or that kind of thing. <laughs> um, his, his videos are pretty, pretty good. Because um, he did a video on... Because someone asked him... Uh, uh, what would happen if uh, people had domesticated um, what are they called? Synapsids? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, animals like uh, Lystrosaurus, those kind of things. I can't remember what they're called. Mammal like reptiles or whatever they're called. That kind of thing. They're not actually like reptile. They're like mammal, like reptile, reptiles. I don't remember. But uh, the Budget Museum did a video about what would domesticated um, Lystrosaurus look like, or something like that. And Keenan did the art for that video, and that's how I found Keenan. And. Uh, that sent me down a rabbit hole. <laughs> um, yeah. And then that got me interested in all that kind of thing. That kind of thing. And then um, a few years ago, I went to um, Fanex in Salt Lake, or wherever it was, and uh, I bought a book called Poke Anatomy. Poke Anatomy. And it's a uh, the author goes through the original 151 Pokemon and tries to explain how they would realistically exist and does that thing where like half of it is like dissected or whatever you know like in a dinosaur book or something like a, an anatomy book <laughs> um, it's, it's the 151 and then Togepi and then uh, that got me like oh okay this would be a cool like D&D &D setting and then that sent me down a rabbit hole of trying to find, like, uh, rules for Pokemon stuff in D&D. &D. And then I found a channel that's playing through doing a Pokemon... Or they, they've just wrapped up the campaign, like, last month. <laughs> uh, it's Homebrew 5th Edition Dungeons & Dragons, but with Pokemon. I was like, well, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> and people were like, yo, dude... Do you have this that your like rules published anywhere? It's like nope, I don't. And then I found Pokemon Tabletop United, which is a fan fan thing. It's not official, but it's a Pokemon tabletop game where you're essentially just playing Pokemon but on a tabletop. Um, so I need to still I need to read through the rules again because <laughs> I was working on that. And then I had a kidney stone episode, and then like it was like wiped from my memory. <laughs> so um, I need, and uh, we've done world building for that on stream a few times, like maybe three times. Um, I got like a, a map making program called uh, Wonder Draft. I think it's you have to pay for it. It's not free. It was like thirty bucks, but it's really good. <laughs> It's a really good map making tool. Um, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. 
but essentially, the, the my setting for this Pokemon thing is like the Wild West, like the, the, the Western Frontier or whatever, but it's Pokemon, there's Pokemon. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, sorry about that. I went down like five different tangents in the span of two minutes. I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, go read Love and Thumps. So I think the books are pretty good. I don't know. I haven't read them. My dad liked them. The only thing I really know about it is that um, people travel through ropes like they at least in like foo or whatever they, they touch a rope and then you like you're you merge into like the weave of the rope and then you go shoot down the rope to the other end and there's a very angry tree <laughs> an angry tree spirit or something i think his name is geth i don't remember I have to see if my dad sells the books. Maybe we can read them. Uh, like every Wednesday or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry, I don't know anything. I don't know much about my Gove. I'm sorry. But man, I got some chat engagement. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, Hi Steve, how are you Steve? I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope you're doing okay. Hope your weekend was good. Treat you okay, I hope. to here, got to here. you can. <laughs> Give me one second. That's cool, Steve. Mine's tomorrow. But please don't drink it anymore if you're hungover. Don't do that. <laughs> I 
Estrella. Estrella, you're a very, very good sheep. Good sheep. A very, very good sheep, Estrella. I'm very proud of you, dear. You work very, very hard. And I'm very proud of you. You're a very good sheep. Good sheep, a strong, a good sheep. Mm. Mm. Such a good sheep. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Mm. Good sheep, good sheep. Mm. 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 Good sheep, good sheep. Mm. There you go, I Hope that was alright for you. <laughs> Hope that was good. Thank you for the redeem, dear. It's a sheep. <laughs> it's a sheep. Or, yeah. Maybe? Maybe that's a goat. I don't know. Are goats and sheep the same thing? I, th I don't think they're the same thing. Probably closely. They're definitely closely related, but um, I don't think they're the same thing. Obviously not. Well, maybe I don't. Let's find out. <laughs> How are why okay. Like alligators and crocodiles. Mm. Okay, so I'm typing how are sheep and and then Google's auto filling it with human brains similar. I actually don't know. Okay. So this is how sheep and human brains are similar. Physiological and neuroanatomical similarities between sheep and humans, such as cerebral white matter distribution, gyrencephalic cerebral cortexes, thick men meninges, <laughs> and highly distinct sulci and gyri, 12 to 14, make sheep an acceptable large brain animal model for neurological research. Cool, but why did you autofill that for me, Google? I <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So sheep and goats are. This is Wikipedia. Um, sheep and goats are closely related. Both are in the subfamily Caprinae. Caprinae. However, they are separate species, so hybrids rarely occur and are always infertile. Uh, the most likely ancestor of domestic sheep is the Mouflon, Ovis Gemelini, and for the goat, the Bezor Ibex, Capra Agagarus, is the most probable. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yes, like alligators and crocodiles. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and a pet. Goats can have. Uh, goats and sheep can create hybrids, apparently. Sheep goat hybrid. Um. Hi, Demon. Uh, so, a sheep-goat hybrid is called a geep <laughs> in popular media, or sometimes a shoat. <laughs> it is the offspring of a sheep and a goat. Well, sheep and goats are similar and can be mated. They belong to different uh, genera in the subfamily Caprinae of the family Bovidae. Sheep belong to the genus Ovis and have 54 chromosomes, while goats belong to the genus Capra and have 60 chromosomes. The offspring of a sheep-goat pairing is generally stillborn. Despite widespread shared pasturing of goats and sheep, hybrids are very rare, demonstrating the genetic distance between the two species. They are not to be confused with sheep-goat chimera, which are officially created by combining the embryos of a goat and sheep. 
Okay, hold on. <laughs> so, people, you can, the people make sheep goat chimeras, unlike the regular, seemingly, uh, but uh, hybrids seem to be still born most of the time. Okay, <laughs> sure. Hi, Demon. Hi, dear. I hope we're doing alright. We're talking about sheep and goats and and uh, Levin Thumps and Michael Vay and Percy Jackson. I feel like they would look the same. There's a picture of one on Wikipedia, the Wikipedia article for sheep goat hybrid. Um, it it's it just looks like a sheep. I don't know. Maybe the, the the colors on the head make it look more like a goat. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's see. Let's see characteristics. Uh, so this is we're just reading the article now. <laughs> uh, the, there is a long-standing belief in sheep goat hybrids, which is presumably due to the animal's resemblance to each other. Some primitive varieties of sheep may be misidentified as goats. In Darwinism, an exposition of the theory of natural selection with some of its applications, 1889, Alfred Russell Wallace wrote, The following statement of Mr. Lowe, uh, uh, open quote, it has, been long known to sh it has been long known to shepherds, though questioned by naturalists, that the pro progeny of the cross between the sheep and the goat is fertile. Breeds of this mixed race are numerous in the north in the north of Europe. Close quote. Nothing appears to be known of such hybrids either in Scandinavia or in Italy, but Professor Gigolioli of Florence has kindly given me some useful references to works in which they are described. The following extract from his letter is very interesting. Open quote. I need not tell you that, that there are. Be that there, that there being such hybrids is now generally accepted as fact. B Buffon, uh, uh, Buffon obtained one such hybrid in 1751, and eight in 1752. Sanson, uh, Sanson mentions a case observed in the Vosges, France. Geoff Saint Hilaire uh, was the first mention, I believe, and in different parts of South America. The ram is more usually crossed with the she-goat than the sheep with the he-goat. The well-known pelones of Chile are produced by the second and third generation of such hybrids. Uh, hybrids bred from goat and sheep are called chabin in French and cabru cabruno in Spanish. In Chile, such hybrids are called carneros larnados. Their breeding inter se... Uh, appears to not be always successful, and often the original cross has to be recommend, recommenced to obtain the proportion of three-eighths of he-goat and five-eighths of sheep, or three-eighths of ram and five-eighths of she-goat, such being the reputed best hybrids, close quote. <laughs> the living geep is born as rare as once every ten years. Wow. So, is it like a... Pol uh, Pizzlies and roller bears, the uh, depends on which one's the mother and which one's the father. If it's a pizzly or a growler, is that is the same work for uh, geep or and shoat, or do people just call them geep or sometimes call them shoats? I wonder. Um, so that was a uh, snippet of. Uh, Darwinism, an exposition of the theory of natural selection with some of its applications from 1889, just in this uh, Wikipedia article. The Wikipedia ar article is sheep-goat hybrid with a hyphen between sheep and goat. I think it's called a hyphen. It's not a... Uh, the what, the, the, the line that... Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Supposedly, most sheep and goat hybrids die as embryos. Hybrid male mammals are often sterile, demonstrating a phenomenon known as Haldane, Hald, Haldane's rule. 
the Haldane phenomenon may apply even when the parent species have the same number of chromosomes as in most cat species hybrids. It sometimes does not apply when the species chromosome number is different, as in wild horse chromosome number 66 with domesticated horse chromosome number 64. Hybrids. Hybrid female fertility tends to decrease with increasing divergence in chromosome similarity between parent species. Presumably, uh, speculation? Question mark in brackets. This is due to mismatch problems during meiosis and the resulting produ production of eggs with unbalanced genetic com complements. However, a buck ewe hybrid born in 2014 died of pregnancy related to complications in 2018, raising the question of the parent species combination has an influence on hybrid fertility. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, blood, blood transcriptome analysis of a buck ewe uh, hybrid is and its parents revealed significant deviations from previously described imprinting schemes and a higher con contribution from the goat genome to the genes expressed in the hybrid's blood. Due to the common genome, buck ewe hybrids share 870 common genes with the maternal goat and 368 genes with the paternal sheep. Alleged and confirmed cases. I need some water. Uh, it's okay, Shrilla. I, I, I'm curious. This is cool. I didn't learn this in school. <laughs> uh, at the Botswana Min Ministry of Agriculture in 2000, a male sheep impregnated a female goat, re resulting in a live male offspring. This hybrid had 57 chromosomes intermediate between sheep, 54, and goats, 60, and was intermediate between the two parent species in type. It had a coarse outer coat, a woolly inner coat, long goat-like -like legs, and, heavy, and a heavy sheep-like body. Although infertile, the hybrid had a very active libido, mounting both ewes and does, even when they were not in heat. He was castrated when he was 10 months old, as were the other kids and lambs in the herd. A male sheep impregnated a female goat in New Zealand, resulting in a mixed litter of kids and a female sheep-goat hybrid with 57 chromosomes. The hybrid was subsequently shown to be fertile when mated with a ram. <laughs> okay, so one, the first one in Botswana wasn't fertile, but he had a very active libido. Um... The second one in New Zealand was fertile and uh, mated with a ram later. In France, natural mating of a doe with a ram produced a female hybrid carrying 57 chromosomes. This animal backcrossed in the veterinary college of Nantes uh, to a ram delivered a to a ram delivered a stillborn and a living male offspring with 54 chromosomes. In March 2014, a buck ewe hybrid was born on a farm close to Gotagen in Germany. <laughs> also in March 2014, a male buck ewe hybrid was born in Ireland. There was a, port a reported case of live births of twin geep on a farm in Ireland in 2018. There was a reported case of a live birth of a sheep goat hybrid on a farm in Tabor in Czech Republic in 2020. Her name was Bar Barunka and she had health complications after being born. Her owners did not know if she was a goat or sheep since neither goats nor sheep accepted her. Upon further inspection, it was discovered she was a sheep goat hybrid. Uh, in May 2021, a healthy doe ram hybrid was born on a farm in Kentucky, USA, despite complications during labor. Her status as a hybrid was confirmed by genetic testing. She has a hybrid karyotype of 57XX. I feel like I just read a SCP article. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Squats? Alright, you gotta do them with me, Thorin. Mm. One, mm. two, mm. three, mm. four, mm. five. Hold on, Mark. Let's get some. There we go. Okay. Work.
that's cool, Stro. Thanks. Thanks for teaching me that. <laughs> well, you learn something new every day, huh? <laughs> All right. Then the next part is sheep, goat, chimera. Okay. <laughs> History. A sheep, goat, chimera, sometimes called a geep in popular media, is a chim chimera produced by combining the embryos of a goat and a sheep. The resulting animal has cells of both sheep and goat origin. A sheep-goat chimera should not be confused with a sheep-goat hybrid. <sighs> Sorry, I need to catch my breath. <laughs> Which can result when a goat mates with a sheep. The first geep... Well, the first sheep-goat chimeras <laughs> were created by researchers at the Institute of Animal Physiology in Cambridge, England by combining sheep embryos with goat embryos. They reported their results in 1984. The su successful chimeras were a mo mosaic of goat and sheep cells and tissues. Okay, so they weren't like... Excuse me. Um, so, a uh, mosaic or genetic mosaicism is a condition in which a multicellular organism possesses more than one genetic line as the result of genetic mutation. This means that various genetic lines resulted from a single fertilized egg. Okay. Okay. So, it wasn't, they didn't make a whole animal, it was just cells and tissues. Okay. Characteristics. In a chimera, each set of cells germline keeps its own species identity instead of being intermediate in type between parental species. Because the chimera contains... Okay, let me drink water. Hold on. chimera each set of cells germline keeps its own species identi identity instead of being intermediate in type between the parent parental species because the chimera contains cells from at least two genetically different embryos and each of these arose by fertilization of an egg by a sperm cell it has at least four genetic parents in contrast a hybrid has only two Although the individual cells and interspecies chimeras are entirely of one of the component species, their behavior is influenced by the environment in which they find themselves. The sheep-goat chimeras have yielded several demonstrations of this. The most obvious was the woolly areas of their fleece, tufts of goat wool, angora type, grew intermingled with ordinary sheep wool, even though the goat breed used in ex the experiments did not exhibit any wool whatsoever. Oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> sheep goat chimeras, as a general rule, may be assumed to be fertile, with the reservations that apply for chimeras generally, which again reflect that the parent embryos may have been of different sex, so that the animal, apart from being a chimera, may also be intersex. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, but in accordance with the mosaic, as opposed to hybrid nature of the interspecies chimera, any individual sperm or egg cell it produces must be of either the pure sheep or the pure goat variety, whether in fact viable germ cells of both species may be or have been produced within the same individual is unknown. The term shoat is sometimes used for sheep, goat hybrids, and chimeras, but the term is more con Conventionally mean, means a young piglet. Really? What? <laughs> Shoat is also another term for piglets. Oh, no. The pig, often called swine, hog, or domestic pig, when distinguishing from other members of the genus Sus, <laughs> it is an omnivorous, domesticated, even toad-hooved animal. 
It is variously considered a subspecies of Sus scrofa, or a distinct species. The pig's head plus body length ranges from 1.9 to 1. Point. Okay. Interesting. So we peaked at eight viewers today, and it was while I was reading about goat, sheep, chimeras. Okay. And okay. <laughs> Interesting. Sorry about that, Estrella. I didn't mean to go down that rabbit hole. Hope you learned something. That's pretty cool. So apparently the, the first attempt at a sheep goat chimera was just a mosaic of sheep and goat cells and tissues. Maybe? I mean, there's no image. So I, I don't... I don't know if the first attempt at getting a chimera, making a chimera was successful at making an individual or if it was just a spattering of like various cells and tissues. <laughs> I took a shot. <laughs> oh man, that's too good. Apparently it's also a, a word for young piglet. Okay, so geep are hybrids and shoats are the chimeras but a chimera has the uh, cells of both sheep and goats but they can only create uh, sperm or egg cells of pure sheep or goat pure goat variety interesting so they're at least fertile And they can also be intersex. And then there's references, notes. Um, okay, shoat. Uh, there's a note about shoat. Although, although this would technically be the correct term for the offspring of a ram and nanny goat, the term shoat is normally defined as a hog that is less than a year old. All right. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, we learned something today. Cool. Um. Cause you skipped Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> sure, Barry. Sure. Barry, of course. Um, oh my goodness, it's really been two hours to twin this. Um, uh, if anyone else has any redeems that they would like to uh, redeem, uh, please do so in the next few minutes because uh, we'll be reading out here. Or I would like to read out here. Um, Sucrose is live. Who else is live? Because they read Sucrose. We've been reading Sucrose. Every time, who else? Some, someone we haven't seen in a while. Is Zami still alive? Zami's still alive. We might go read Zami. Hi, Jorts. 
I don't know if I can do ear cupping, Steve, because I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a 3DO. I can do this though. You're not too late. Uh, droids arrives precisely when they need to. <laughs> uh, but we'll be reading out here in a few minutes. Or I would, I would like to. Uh, time flew by. We read uh, the uh, Wikipedia article about sheep goat hybrids. <laughs> I think we'll raid sucrose. I think we'll raid sucrose. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I need to give Barry some smooches and Steve some ear cupping. Alright. Mm -hmm. loud. I feel like that might have been loud. <laughs> oh, is Teeny lurking? I <laughs> sent an e ramble about sea pipers. Oh no. Thank you for the redeem, Barry. Thank, thank you. Okay, Steve. I think the best I can do for air cupping is this. I can, I can do something like this. Is this okay for you, Steve? If it's not, I'll, I'll uh, refund your points. I don't. I don't. I don't have a three DL. This for another day I could do fine cupping, but I don't not today. <laughs> tingle explosion, well I'm glad this gives you tingles. See if my dad still has the the love and thump books. Cause uh, I never read them. Maybe we can read them on stream sometime. Maybe we can do that Saturday. Like to wind down the end of stream, maybe. Cause I, I grew up thinking Love and Thumps was a big deal, the the the, the book series. Because the, the author came to my school did, did for like an assembly. Apparently he went on like an imagination tour to like 900 schools, or is it 500? <laughs> um, uh, but apparently he was, his books have been published in um, Deseret Book, which is uh, LDS Church's bookstore, chain of bookstores. Like, if you want to work there, you have to hold a temple recommend. Um, I think. <laughs> maybe, maybe they changed that. And, uh, the author, Obert Sky's, uh, books were published by Shadow Mountain house or something which is based in Salt Lake I think so uh, makes sense why he came to my school <laughs> 
I just thought that was a big deal, like, as big a deal as, like, Percy Jackson at the time. Because uh, his imagination tour was in 2010, which would have been when I was in sixth grade, I think. So the timeline lines up. Hi, Nighty. Hi, dear. Mm. How are you, dear? Good to see you, cutie pie. Hope you're doing alright. Hope you're weekend treated you good. Did you eat today? Sorry, I just bombarded everyone with questions. <laughs> where were you? Where, where were you at 12 p.m. today? Huh? Huh? What, what did you eat for breakfast? <laughs> Did you brush your teeth? Huh? <laughs> Hi, Nighty. You did eat? Good, good, good. Was it yummy? Was it another big burrito? has for teams um, get them in soon here uh, we're gonna go read sucrose we're at a party so lots of food and drinks nice nice we have we have had so much food this week <laughs> I think oh someone from the the neighborhood or your ward brought us a dinner from like Tuesday and like the rest of the week. It was nuts. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Something fell on the floor upstairs, <laughs> I guess. Or something fell over in the bathroom. I don't know. <laughs> So we have so many rolls. <laughs> we have a thing of yeast rolls. They're pretty good. And uh, uh, potato rolls, they're not that soft anymore. I think they're, they're getting stale. And some hard rolls. And muffins. And breakfast sandwiches. And salad. And funeral potatoes. Purring? I can try. <laughs> I'll do the RR first. So grandma knocking stuff around. I don't know what that was. I don't know. It sounded like it was up something fell on the floor upstairs, but that could have been something in my room. I don't know. It's alright. My beanie babies will protect me from the monsters. I'm not I'm not worried. <laughs> Try purring? I don't know. I don't know if I can. I can do maybe something similar. I can't. Pr okay. Let me. I'll just do it. <laughs> I apologize in advance if this is a weird noise. Okay. Well, to like purr, you have to be able to roll your R's, and I can't roll my R's for the life of me. <laughs>
It's not, is it cute? The dates. to do that so it's <laughs> there you go thanks for the redeem berry i hope that was okay for you <laughs> i hope that was okay no thank you berry <coughs> i know nine tail likes that sound There's no more redeems, then uh, we'll uh, raid out here. We'll get the raid going. And uh, if you're new here um, and you want more ASMR for whatever reason, you like my stuff, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you would. But anyway, I upload all my VODs if I can help it. Uh, to YouTube um, the link in my about section should work um, there's a playlist of 108 videos <laughs> of my ASMR um, I don't know if the old ones are good um, there is um, thigh ASMR streams rods in there um, you'll have to dig for them I, there's probably like four maybe at this point um yeah i did a i did a recorded asmr thing for christmas eve i did it christmas eve night and i uploaded it christmas morning um that was kind of just a i just recorded it in obs that was not it's not i didn't stream it <laughs> Um, Teto seems to like it. If you guys want more content like that, where I just sit and record ASMR sometimes, uh, let me know. I, I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um. Let's see. We're gonna wait to cross. Um, she's doing ASMR tonight. We're gonna go support her because she's a cutie patootie. Uh, her giggles are also some of the best I've ever heard. They're so cute. <laughs> um, we're also on the 24th of February. Uh, we're going to be playing Portal 2 with Sucrose. I'm excited because I haven't gotten to play games with Sucrose yet. Um, we're gonna play Portal 2's co op stuff. Uh, I'm very excited. I don't know if we're going to do the whole thing in one stream. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> Portal 2 kind of wore me down there at the end. But uh, anyway, I love you guys. Thank you all for coming. Mwah. I'll see you guys tomorrow for Power World. And uh, tomorrow is our actual affiliate anniversary. And again, we're, we're celebrating it um, on Saturday, next Saturday. Um, because I don't want to do a big stream on Monday, because nobody's going to show up on a Monday. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to do some sewing if I can get this stuff ready in time. Uh, we're going to eat an MRE. Um, yeah. 
for Monday. Well, it's a Monday. <laughs> um, Mondays are pretty slow for me. But anyway, mwah, be nice to sucrose. Bye, guys. Love you guys. Thank you all for watching. Good night. Brush your teeth. Drink water. Bye-bye. <gasps>